Question, what is the next big thing that you are going to do? Exams, uh, work trips, holidays, camps, for all those sorts of things. What's the kind of next big thing for you? Uh, my name is Aaron. Uh, here is a picture of our Facebook profile page. And we are asking the question, is it possible to be a Christian and not go to church? And when you know something is going to happen, you live in a way that reflects that, right? So uh, it's the same with Paul. He says that if you know what is happening at the end of the world, then you live in a way that prepares for that. Let, let me read and I'll explain what's going on. Uh, so we're in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 1. Brothers and sisters, about times and dates we do not need to write to you. For you know very well that the day of the Lord will come like a thief in the night. While people are saying, peace and safety, uh, sorry, peace and safety, destruction will come on them suddenly as labour pains on a pregnant woman, and they will not escape. But you, brothers and sisters, are not in darkness, so that this day should surprise you like a thief. You are all children of the light and children of the day. We do not belong to the night or to the darkness. So then, let us not be like others who are asleep, but let us be awake and sober. For those who sleep, sleep at night, and those who get drunk, get drunk at night. But since we belong to the day, let us be sober, putting on faith and love as a breastplate and the hope of salvation as a helmet. For God did not appoint us to suffer wrath but to receive salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ. He died for us, so that whether we are awake or asleep, we may live together with him. Therefore, encourage one another and build each other up, just as in fact you are now doing. <sighs> when is Jesus gonna do what the angel said in Acts 1 and come back? And if you haven't yet seen the last video, it might be sensible to go and check that out uh, because this part of the Bible talks about the end of the world. When does Jesus come back? We don't know. Apocalypse calendars and videos which call the president of America the Antichrist are all stupid. We don't know. Check out what Jesus says in Acts 1 verse 7. We do know that it is going to come suddenly, like a thief in the night. I love verse three, it says, while people are saying peace and safety, destruction will come on them. This isn't some zombie apocalypse or kind of horror World War III event. This is at a time when people are content, happy, peaceful, and safe. That is the fact in this passage. Jesus is going to come back. He will rightly deal out judgment. And by the way, if you struggle to think about a God who punishes people, then you are pretty sheltered. And when someone really wrongs us, it's right to want punishment for them. Justice is right when it punishes people who are wrong. And if we witness God's judgment on people, we can be sure that on the last day, we're not gonna be saying, God, you're well unfair. Sudden destruction, sudden punishment for the wicked. Now remember the last video, how good it was for someone to be in a relationship with God when Jesus comes back. So what difference does this make? Well, that, that's what Paul goes on to explain. Verse four talks about the end of the world as we know it. It's not gonna be, it's not gonna come like a surprise. Now we know that is gonna happen. We can live like it. And God doesn't lie. Jesus is coming back. Whoop, 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 whoop. What does that mean? Well, remember the last video, whether we are dead or alive, that is our finish line. At that point, judgment and the new creation happens. Now, when my wife goes away with the kids and I, I'm at home alone, it happens very rarely, um, I could say, yes, I don't have to think about her anymore so I can live how I want to. But because I love her, I'm thinking about her most of the time. Even though she isn't there, I'm working out ways I could love her. I'm living in a way that's looking forward to her return. That's exactly the same here. Jesus is coming back. We don't say, ah, well, we just do whatever we want. It doesn't matter. Of course it matters. Verse 8 says, uh, But since we belong to the day, let us be sober, putting on faith and love as a breastplate and the hope of salvation as a helmet. Faith, love, and hope, it is our armor. 
Steve, it is our flama. Why do we need protection? Because the world thinks that you are an idiot. Our world is drinking and smoking and arguing its way to death and then accuses you of being boring because you don't join in. But Jesus is coming back. And life with Jesus is vibrant, unpredictable and satisfying. It's like the world is mucking around in a muddy puddle and dropping abuse on you for not joining in because you are getting ready to jump into the most awesome water park. We are people of the day. Don't believe the lie that the only way to live life is to join in with the world. But that leaves me with an apple question. Is it possible to be a Christian and not go to church? I had a young person ask me this. They said, they're fine. I'm fine. It doesn't matter. I'm a Christian. I don't really need to go to church. It just proves that they've misunderstood Christianity. It's also a really selfish question. It's not that you have to go to church. It's that you are the church. Look at verse 11. What does he tell us to do? He says, encourage each other and build each other up. How can you do that if at no point on your week you don't talk to anyone else who shares the same faith? How can you encourage others by not seeing anyone from church in the week? How can, you, how can the church build itself up in love if they go to church on Sunday morning and simply ignore any relationship and walk out at the end of the service? It's selfishness. Why do you devalue yourself so much that you don't think you can encourage others? Of course you can. And when you do, you'll realise how awesome church is. God saved you for a reason. Go find out what that reason is and go to church. I will see you in the next video. I will see you in the next video. I will see you in the next video. Yes, it's bad that I really need a wee. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> Ooh. No, that's huge. Yeah. Another Steve challenge. Okay, Steve's challenge time. Let's see what we've got. Do as many press-ups as you can in 30 seconds. 30 seconds, I reckon. Now, I uh, do have kids and I now currently have a dad body, so I now have to lift up more than I have done in the past. Uh, do as many press-ups as you can in 30 seconds. I reckon I could crack out 25 in 30 seconds. I reckon I could. We'll see how we go. All right, so uh, my video is gonna be rolling soon, um, but if you think that you can do more press-ups than me, then get on your hands. <laughs> it's gotta be a full press up, none of this knee business, right? So it's gonna be on your toes and your hands. It's gotta be down so that your um, like nose has to hit the floor or like you've gotta get really close to the floor, okay? I'm not having any of this like <laughs> stuff, all right? So um, if you think you can do more than me, uh, then grab a phone, uh, prop it up against something, do as many press ups as you can and get it uploaded. I look forward to seeing your entries. Here's my video. <laughs> knackered <laughs> is all I can say to that amazing right if you think you can do better than that which is unlikely let's face it if you can do any better than that let me know um, by uploading your video to the group and I will see you in the next video